I've received a report there is a Bolian freighter that is overdue arriving at Earth's space dock. It may need assistance. Please talk to Malcolm Sissel in the shipyard. He will have more information about the missing vessel than I do. Having been brought to the year 2409 and given command of a new vessel, the Armager A, some of our first assignments are set in our galactic backyard, as it were. The SS Azur is a freighter in service to the Federation. In the early years of Starfleet, freighters were often run by independent and privately owned companies and individuals, but with the expansion of the Federation over the years, these sort of vessels are pushed to operate on the outer edges of Federation space, while the core systems retain a UFP-controlled network of supply. Therefore, for a freighter to miss its rendezvous, leaving Starfleet none the wiser, is an oddity worth investigating. To any ships in range, this is Dana Brott of the transport SS Azura. Please help! Warp core containment field down! Radiation flooding ship! Communications and life support failing! Cannot eject warp core! Need immediate evacuation and assistance! Please help us! Well, Captain Brott certainly fits the description of a ship in distress. To any ships in range, this is Dana Brott of the transport SS Azura. Please help. We're being pursued by Orion Raiders. Crew injured. Taking heavy fire. Dropping out of warp near your coordinates. Need immediate evacuation and assistance. Please help us. Several Orion vessels drop out of warp behind the Azura and open fire. It seems that this attack has been a prolonged one, judging by what Brott has told us. And now their warp core is damaged, they cannot outrun their aggressors any longer. Without warning, two more Orion vessels drop in to drive us away. The squat Orion Corvettes are of limited power against a fully armed Starfleet vessel, even a retrofitted Constitution class such as the Armager. With the unwanted advances of the Orions thoroughly spurned, we turn our attention to the Azura, not so well equipped to deal with these pirates. But why are the Orions attacking us? Well, aside from the Syndicate being a criminal organisation that's operated for centuries, in 2384, the Orion Syndicate signed a non-aggression pact with the Klingon Empire and became a vassal state of the Empire, meaning that although they rule their own people and occupy their own space, they are effectively allied to the Klingons in every other way. Though chasing this frigate so far into Federation space proved to be too bold of a move for these privateers. Tomet informs us that the radiation levels are spiking on the Azura, and that we should assemble an away team to try to assist in repairs. The level of radiation exposure is nothing we cannot fix, however it will scramble any outward bound transport signals until it's repaired. So, until we fix the warp core, it's one way in, no way out. There are numerous plasma leaks across the ship. The scalding matter blocks our path, and we need to cut power to the affected areas to proceed. However, Orion pirates have already boarded. Unsurprising, really. They've had ample opportunity to do so, and they are, after all, after the ship's plunder. With the transporters being scrambled by the radiation leak, boarding the ship would have been their only available option. In a side room we find an injured crew member, but without advanced medical training we cannot help. If our captain had chosen a career in science, they'd be able to stabilise the unfortunate soul, but as a tactical captain with a different skill set, we'd better secure the ship first, triage later. Cutting off the plasma flow, we are able to proceed but encounter those Orion boarders. A firefight ensues in the dilapidated corridors of the floundering vessel, and we forge onwards through the bowels of the Azura, locating crew members, defeating the pirates, and repairing subsystems as we go, and occasionally helping ourselves to some loot. We find our way to main engineering, where the captain and the survivors have holed up. I guess she came down here to try and assist with the repairs, or perhaps the bridge is too badly damaged. Scaverin quickly notes that the warp core is practically beyond repair at this point, and it's only a matter of time before containment is lost, and the antimatter within annihilates the vessel entirely in a warp core breach. We hid an Orion ambush on our way to K7. 
We lost our weapons almost immediately, and then we took a direct hit near engineering. Our warp engine's magnetic antimatter containment field failed. We had no choice but to drop shields and use the power to try to stabilize the containment field. As soon as the shields were down, Orions boarded the ship! I'll never let those green pirates have the Azura. Please, take my crew to safety. I'll keep trying to stabilize the warp core. If I'm lucky, I can buy you some time. Our objective is to now escort the surviving crew from this ship to the Armager. If we were a captain trained in engineering, we would be able to fix the issues with the core and stabilise the ship. Alas, Mark Hale is not. As for those injured crew members we passed on the way here, they're too injured to move, and time is limited I'm afraid to say, they will have to stay behind. One thing I can do? As a tactical captain we can reroute the plasma flow to overcome the Orion invaders blocking our retreat. However, the presence of more thugs means that there must be more Orion ships within transporter range. Go to the transporter room, we'll be right behind you. And with that, our meagre selection of survivors beams out. As a tactical captain, we save the fewest lives on this mission. Engineering, we could have prevented the warp core breach long enough to get everybody off. And medical, we'd have been able to stabilise the injured crewmen to evacuate them safely. Sure enough, the transporter chief reports incoming Orion ships. That must have been where the second wave of boarders came from. The minute we're back in our chair, the Orions hail us. Leave now if you know what's good for you, Starfleet. We're taking the ship, her crew, and her cargo. Oh, sure, sure, my mistake. Here you go. Oh, no, wait. This is a war, you're in our space, and I'm hoping that Captain Dana Brock will swoon into my heroic arms for having saved her. Hey, I'm a 23rd century captain, things were different then. Don't judge, open fire. Two more Orion Corvettes are easily dispatched, but then the Slave Master battleship warps in. This must be the one running the operation. It packs a bit more of a punch, but still isn't much in the defensive department. However, it isn't alone. Several much smaller fighters are zipping around us, strafing our shields, probing for weaknesses. Ignoring the little nuisances, we focus down the big ship. Anything called Slave Master can't be good news. Nor Battleship for that matter, so priority target. The interceptors are completely obliterated by the phaser fire of a starship, like cracking a walnut with a sledgehammer wrapped around a wrecking ball although they can be difficult to hit due to their extreme manoeuvrability. Right, the last part of the plan is to swoop in and save Captain Brot. With the radiation gone, we should be able to beam her out, no problem, we just have to close within transporter range before the Azura succumbs to its injuries. Ooh, just in time. You saved my crew. I'll tell you whatever I can. What was the Azura's mission, Captain Brot? I'm going to assume cargo hauling. The Azura was a transport ship, best in the quadrant. Mostly I hauled medical supplies or farming equipment, but I had room in the cargo bays for a little of everything. I have one customer who is just crazy for Tranya. I don't save the galaxy on a regular basis like you Starfleet types do, but hauling cargo is a good way to make a living. I'm helping people in my own way. But what happened with the Azura? We have been having trouble with the warp core for a few days. I was hoping I could make it to the closest starbase, but... When the containment field started to collapse, I used every bit of power we had to help stabilize it. The minute I rerouted power from the shields to the containment field, the Orions were there. For all I know, they detected I was in trouble and were waiting for the right time to pounce. Interesting, so the Orions took advantage of the Azura's much needed maintenance. What about the Orions? What do you think? There's thieves, pirates, and a whole lot of trouble if you ask me. 
Raiders have always been a danger to ships like mine, but the problem has gotten worse since the Orions allied with the Klingons. Now they think they can do anything to anyone. Someone needs to put a stop to these raids. Well, no argument there. What about you, Captain? What are your plans now? Go back to Belaris for a few weeks, I suppose. I have enough Latinum saved up to get me back on my feet. As soon as I can get another ship, I'll be doing transport runs again. I have customers waiting. Back to Belaris, then? Okay. Thank you, Captain. That's all. With all of that wrapped up, we are left with a scattering of survivors from the Azura and we can depart the system at our leisure. Our first mission in the Klingon War is completed, though we could have done a better job under different circumstances. Well done! You saved that crew just in time. In return for our efforts, we gained the comm codes for the SS Azura too. Brot's second freighter, which can act as a trader when we are traversing the interstellar expanse. It's a tough life for a freighter captain, even more so during a time of war. The supply lines are vital, but they cannot be defended all the time, there simply aren't enough ships. So many vessels, such as the Azura, will risk pushing themselves too hard rather than risk more time in vulnerable open waters. In this instance, we saw what can go wrong. Thank you for watching. This is a continuing series where we work our way through the chapters of Star Trek Online, exploring the narrative threads and tales of the 25th Century Federation. You may have played these tales yourself, but I hope to be able to present a new view on the campaign, and I hope to see you next time for another episode. Until then, I've been Rick, USS Armager, out. Thanks again, and goodbye.